You all certainly deserve an explanation for my absence, and I find it embarrassing that it's taken me this long to come out about why I've been away. So I hope this video finally satisfies that silence. But I must warn, this is unlike any video I've ever made, nor any video I likely ever will make again. This is not a call to revamp a months old conflict, nor is it an attack on any participant in the story, aside from a reasonable and valid criticism. I've chosen to speak on this, as I represent a quiet percentage of those understandably unwilling to risk their own reputations for speaking out about this particular case. Be warned that this video is not for the faint or immature, and all YouTube comments that are presented in an antagonistic, trolling, or perhaps even joking manner will either be ignored or deleted. So with that out of the way, let's talk about Sawtooth Waves. In February of 2023, an Instagram user by the name of Beware Sawtooth Waves came out with allegations of grooming against Sawtooth Waves. Sawtooth soon responded with his own couple of posts on his community tab confirming the events that she had described and apologizing for them before immediately privating his channel, blackening his profile, and cutting off his Twitter. The news came so fast and all the damage was done immediately, shocking his entire fanbase and causing notable content creators to take down or restrict content made in collaboration with him. He was effectively cancelled from the community, and I'm here to discuss whether or not it was justified. Sawtooth has been an influence on myself and many in the fandom. He was one of the most cherished brony analysts and musicians, having been a part of the YouTube brony community since 2014. And seemingly overnight, all of that was ripped away. So a loss like this for the fandom in my opinion should be reviewed and determined if it was truly worth it. The story goes back to March of 2017, when the accuser, whose name has since been revealed as Ash, age 14 at the time, had made some fan art that had reached the attention of Sawtooth, who was 18, at the time known as the Brony Notion. He appreciated her work and they quickly became friends, with her making some art for his 19th birthday the next week. The majority of their chats have been described as discussing fan theories or other MLP-related topics and occasional general life stuff. She would turn 15 only three months later after his birthday, their chats were sparse but fun for both, and Ash describes the feeling of joy for even being able to talk to her favorite YouTuber, and those feelings only increased the longer they were in contact. It's important to note that Ash's home life at this time was described as very abusive. She wasn't getting much love or positive attention from anyone around her, so she pretty much sought out that attention from Sawtooth, or pretty much anyone that would listen. She says she's autistic, so naturally she does have some issues with hyperfixation that I'm sure many people in the fandom, including myself, would understand. So while some have been very critical about how clingy she was with Sawtooth, it's important to at least keep that in mind that she is suffering from autism and has to deal with these issues of hyperfixation, overdependence, and just general things that a normal person would not process as well, especially someone who's still growing, still maturing as a teenager. Around June of that year, when Sawtooth released his famous A New Pair of Wings PMB, the relationship grew closer than just the creator and fan dynamic. They would start talking about more personal things such as pets, family struggles, and hardships. This was shared between the two as they both would vent to each other about their own personal lives. This attention was a coping mechanism for her depression and lack of attention at home, and it eventually manifested into a full-blown crush. In August of that year, she messaged Sawtooth confessing that she had a crush on him, and this is where the story takes its infamous turn in many's eyes. Up until this moment, the two were entirely platonic friends, but upon this revelation, a ripple was started. Satu didn't quite know how to take the news and he politely let her down, admitting he doesn't feel the same way. Based on the following outcome, it's assumed that the news wasn't taken too well. An awkward period would follow, but they did remain friends and eventually would return to just chatting about the usual topics. By October to November, the initial outcome of the confession led way to more relaxed approach in their friendship, having moved past the awkward period. Not much is noted from Ash at this time, but based off some available screenshots, the two decided to keep on as friends, and that Sawtooth would just have to be a bit more careful in not egging these feelings on. However, Sawtooth would admit that he could find her attractive if she were a bit older, and that it's simply an age thing on why they wouldn't work out. Around this time, an activity was proposed, in which the two would engage in dates over roleplay. This was entirely Ash's idea and Sawtooth accepted. He maintained that the whole game was simply a pretend relationship. The activity would involve text hugging and kissing at most, but never went anywhere sexual. The roleplay only lasted about a month or two, when in December, Ash's phone was taken away by her mother for unrelated reasons, and she discovered the chats. This enraged her, not knowing the context, threatening and forbidding Sawtooth from ever talking with her daughter again. This was the heaviest point in the entire relationship thus far. While they weren't technically dating, the roleplay alone would have come off as concerning to an overprotective, strict, and abusive mother. The only way they were allowed to communicate was to write handwritten letters to each other, which they had previously done when sending fan art. 
As a side note, I will say that this is probably the hardest event to understand from the mother's actions, because most mothers, when seeing their daughters chatting romantically with an older person, they would forbid contact entirely. So for her to allow letters between them two, there had to have been at least some leniency in the mother's mind knowing that Satu's wasn't a threat to her, at least enough to allow them to contact still via written letters, probably moderated. It's unconfirmed entirely how much she weighs in apart from just forbidding contact between the two. Ash's mother forbade contact until around autumn of 2018 when Ash would turn 16 and Satu's 20. The following conversations between the two were casual and silly in nature. They would occasionally flirt but nothing substantial thus not to awaken any issues with their mother, who would allow a curfew of 9pm for their texting. This would get interrupted again by around April to May of 2019. Ash's phone was taken away for a final time for reasons unknown and she was permanently forbidden to talk to Sawtooth. Her mother contacted him as well telling him he's not allowed to talk to her anymore which he respected and let be. 2019 would prove to be the most difficult moment in Ash's life as she was entering her junior year and going on to her senior year by the summer. She had grown severely attached to Sawtooth that she couldn't focus on much else. She would frequently break her mother's rules eventually when she got her phone back and she would start texting Sawtooth again. Uh, however, Sawtooth would not respond or respecting that distance. They would, however, have a string of contact with a user named Nintendo Brony, currently known as Gamebits. I've personally spoken to this user and they've given me some insight on the relationship and some details that happened after the relationship that many people don't actually know about i didn't think anything too big would happen as for the idea of them having a relationship i had my doubts because of the whole age thing but one thing i was able to see is that sawtooth genuinely did care about her and there was a lot of times where i felt like he was probably too caring to where sometimes it may feel like she's walking over him but i didn't really want to impede on that the full interview will be linked below as an unlisted video Ash described 2019 as being very challenging for her schoolwork, as she would often lose focus on her studies in favor of Sawtooth or other topics such as Pokemon. She would skip assignments and classes allegedly as many as three a day, and thus causing her to fail many subjects. She even mentions that her teachers saw potential in her that could have made it into a top state college, but her lack of focus and attention would lead her to reject the potential for college in hopes that one day she'd meet Sawtooth in real life. She felt that college would get in the way of that, as it stands today they never met in person. Here I need to address something important. Spoilers for pretty much the entire story, but Ash essentially links this main issue, failing in school, to Sawtooth and blames pretty much all of that on him. She does kind of indirectly blame him, but in a screenshot she essentially does link Sawtooth being in her life to her not being able to finish school. And any reasonable person would know that this is not Sawtooth's doing. Even as a teenager, we're all responsible for our own studies, and even a person of an autistic nature can't put the blame on someone else. Especially considering that Sawtooth consistently told her not to focus on him and focus on her school instead, but she had consistently rejected this. That's not Sawtooth's fault, especially when he was actively encouraging her, which I could also vouch for. I believe I've even told her a few times, I was like, hey, just finish school. It's not that hard, you know, you just gotta sit down, focus and study but obviously she didn't, and she's clearly using her obsession with Sawtooth as an excuse for that, as if that's his fault. This is not something that should be blamed on Sawtooth, as it is clear that during the 2019 year, Sawtooth was pretty much out of the picture. They had not communicated for months, but the majority of the year of 2019, during the time that Ash was failing school. For her to blame that on him in the first place, doesn't make sense, but especially with the fact that he was not in the picture. It's the biggest criticism that I can personally give to Ash. 2020 hit, Ash and Sawtooth were still separated, with Ash only sending messages through game bits. By March of 2020, school was cut short, leaving Ash further alone and isolated. As with many during the pandemic, emotions and mental health took a massive toll on her when in lockdown. Her hyperfixation on Sawtooth caused freakouts and breakdowns and tears, and the only hope in sight was waiting until she turned 18, where she would no longer have to listen to her mother's rules. June of 2020 would eventually come around and she would turn 18, being surprised by an immediate text from Sawtooth. I'd like to take a moment to briefly check on Sawtooth's part of the story. You can find his community posts on his YouTube channel, uh, that's currently the only post on his channel. For the most part, he describes that the events that she listed were in fact correct, though he does maintain that some aspects were remembered differently. He doesn't specify these aspects as it would be a distraction from the overall issue at hand, but many have come out and said that Ash has taken many screenshots out of context. With how intensely cropped a lot of the screenshots are, especially considering the fact that they were role-playing at the time, Many of these screenshots can certainly be done out of context and purposely made to fit a narrative against Sawtooth. As it stands, it's unknown exactly how many messages were out of context, but it is likely that enough of them were. By the time Ash turned 18, she reunited with Sawtooth via text message. Sometime later, Sawtooth asked her officially to be her partner, to which she eagerly accepted. At this point, both were adults. 
Sawtooth was 22 and Ash was 18, so they were free to legally engage in whatever activities they wanted, which included sexual roleplay. The details for this are not completely public for good reason, but it's assumed more intimate messages and possibly nudes were sent. I'm not going to dwell on this because this should remain private between themselves and is not our business whatsoever, but it is something that was brought up and has sparked controversy. The relationship, however, immediately began running into issues. Ash admits that much of her part was toxic and over-dependent, typical of an over-possessive girlfriend. This nature apparently even existed prior, as sometime in 2018, they had an unspecified drama that dealt with trust issues and resulted in Ash searching Sawtooth's phone. The state of the relationship in 2020 likely were of the same possessiveness, and it quickly deteriorated the relationship. By December of that year, Sawtooth formally broke up with Ash after only six months. The two had grown into completely different people after their separation, so things simply didn't work out between them. It was a normal breakup for all intents and purposes. They would get back together for a friends with benefits type of arrangement about a month later, and that remained their general relationship status. This would allegedly last until around mid-2022. It wouldn't be until December of that year when Ash would decide to come out about her experiences and she made it clear to Sawtooth that she was going to frame it as abuse and grooming. Sawtooth initially defended himself and begged her not to come forward, fearing it would ruin his career and he'd never be trusted again. To be fair, this is exactly what happened. The two would argue over time about their issues, but ultimately Sawtooth surrendered and did his best to apologize for everything he had unwittingly done to her. As so, the two made their posts and released them roughly around the same time in February of 2023, with Sawtooth taking down his channel, closing his server, and offering refunds to everyone that had financially supported him. Apart from a few updates regarding his mental health, he has since dropped off the face of the internet. With all this out of the way, I think it's about time we talked about what went wrong here. For starters, let's address a few points, definitions, and words that have just been thrown around by various people around the community. Number one, grooming. This is essentially the nail in the coffin for many people who have criticized Sawtooth's actions regarding the relationship. But what does it mean? According to Google, grooming is the action of attempting to form a relationship with a child or young person with the intent of sexual assaulting them or inducing them to commit an illegal act such as setting drugs or joining a terrorist organization. The key words here are intentions of sexual assault. This is important because none of that had occurred between their relationship that can be categorized as sexual assault. They both agree that Sawtooth had drawn a hard line when it came to anything explicit or suggestive whenever they were engaging in anything prior to her turning 18. The most they did before this period was texting hugs and texting kisses. This is about as tame as a relationship can get, and it's rather appropriate for someone 16, 17 years old. After they turned adults, nothing about their relationship was off limits, and if they wanted to engage in sexual roleplay or sending nudes to each other, they had every right to. And a side note, I find it very hard to believe exactly the transitional period around the time that Ash had turned 18. She essentially frames it that at midnight, Sawtooth asked her to be her partner, and they started doing sexual roleplay immediately, like minutes after she turned 18. I highly doubt that is correct. And if it was correct, we would have seen some screenshots. That is a relatively recent event. And if she has screenshots from 2017, 2018, you'd think that she'd have some screenshots for this. If you recall from Sawtooth's own message, he recalls a lot of events very differently. And this very well could be one of them. Number two, the age gap. Sawtooth and Ash were officially four years and three months apart. They began their general communications around the time Ash was 15 and Sawtooth was 19. To put that into perspective, I was 14 at the beginning of my high school years. I was a freshman in 14 and I turned 15 in my junior year. I knew many people in the senior class when I was growing up that were 18 and 19 or so. So it is very possible that if they were in the same classes, like if they were, if they were in the same chemistry class or the same math or science class, that they could have met each other in person. And here's the thing, this relationship happens all the time. Many of our parents started at those age and many people around the world started at those ages. 15, 14 or so, people do start in relationships that young. And while they don't always turn out that well, many of them are able to and they can turn into fully fledged relationships. When it comes to someone that's four years and three months apart, it's not a recommended age range, but it's not something that's alarming in the sense that someone has a mental fixation on a particular demographic. And that's something I want to talk about a little bit later. Obviously, in this current age, the younger generation has a lot more access to the internet and their connections with people is readily available to pretty much anyone. So nowadays, it is a lot more taboo for anyone of that age range. It's a very blurry line that not a lot of people have firmly defined on what is okay and what is not. At some point it does get very subjective about which age is correct and which age is off limits. In this particular case I believe that 
that line was being treaded on but was safely on one side because nothing was sexual. That was at least Sawtooth's initial belief on the entire relationship and what he was using to justify in his head at the time. Since then he has of course looked back on his actions and realized that it was not the best decision to continue a relationship with this person even after she did become an adult because there was a dependency issue there. Number three, Sawtooth's errors. I've talked a bunch about where Ash went wrong, but let's go ahead and address what Sawtooth's mistakes were. For starters, the moment that Ash confessed her crush on him was definitely the point where he should have realized that something about this relationship could go wrong, especially going into the social climate that was rapidly changing around this time. Many also point to the fact that he did eventually develop feelings back towards Ash, and they point to that as possible pedophilia, and I'm, again, I'm going to be talking about that in a slight second. When she proposed the roleplay situation where they would exchange virtual hugs and virtual kisses to each other, Satu generally should have denied the offer to roleplay date. Proceeding with such an activity would only increase the attraction from Ash to Sawtooth, further creating an issue between the two. And finally, perhaps the most important flaw, Sawtooth had a clear advantage of power over Ash. This is not necessarily his fault, it's more the fact that he was a very notable content creator and she was simply a fan that admired his content. If this was two completely normal people, this would not be an issue, but because Sawtooth had that upper advantage, that created an overdependency and overfixation uh, on, this, on the part of Ash that was directed at Sawtooth. Sawtooth should have been generally more aware that this kind of thing would happen, but it's also worth it to consider that he was only 19 at the time that this first occurred. And as they got older, it might have been justified in the fact that she was getting older as well. However, it is true that many kinds of relationships like this do in fact happen. There are many notable content creators or celebrities that just date normal people, eventually marry normal people. The dynamic is very hard to pull off, but it is indeed possible. So with all that being said, Sawtooth was still very young himself. A reminder that he was only 19 when this relationship first began, and holding him to the moral standards of a fully grown adult is not necessarily fair, especially considering we're holding the same exact standard to Ash, who generally would not be knowing of what their relationship would entail at the age of 15 or 16 or 17. Teenagers make mistakes all the time, and they shouldn't be dogged about it into their adult years, especially when it was a genuine error in judgment. Number four, pedophilia. Let me tell you guys a story. When I was six years old, I had an older family member who was tasked with watching me and some of my other uh, younger cousins, and he took the opportunity to sexually molest all of us. He would coerce us into doing sexual acts with, in front of him that were completely inappropriate for our age. Uh, he was teaching us about sex way younger than we should have known. This event plagued me for the majority of my life, as it had caused me to grow up very sexualized in nature. It was a very difficult thing for me to eventually get over and uh, accept that it happened, but it was an extremely hard point in my life. I am telling you this for two reasons. For one, I completely emphasize with the victims of abuse. If you have been abused at the hand of a predator, you should come forward and don't let this video dissuade you from that. That is not what this video is meant to do. Secondly, and I cannot stress this enough, Sawtooth Waves is not a pedophile. Seemingly, the overwhelming majority of people that have commented on this case quite literally have no idea what actual pedophilia looks like, which is honestly a good thing in that they have never experienced it, but as one who has indeed experienced actual pedophilia, this is not even remotely in the vicinity of the same ballpark. For one, a pedophile is someone with a substantial sex drive for prepubescent children, not a one-off attraction to someone four years younger than you. For another, if you were to go by the age-specific variant for an attraction to a 15-year-old, which is a fepophilia, Sawtooth wouldn't even fit in that category because he is of the same age range, 15 to 19. That should emphasize exactly how close in age they were. When people throw around the term pedophile for just any relationship with someone younger than you, it overcorrects and ignores the actual mental problems of a pedophile. Sawtooth isn't some predator seeking out underage girls to groom and sexually assault, and the evidence proves that. He's not a monster that needs to be put behind some cage because he can't control his tendencies. This was an isolated incident with one particular person that wouldn't have happened with anyone else. An isolated incident doesn't make someone a pedophile. Going back to Ash, there are a number of points I need to address regarding her callout of Sawtooth, and there are some details that aren't publicly known by many. For one, her callout was strictly designed to allude to what she was called sus behavior over messages from Sawtooth saying, I love you and I value having you in my life. 
There were a number of kind and generous things done, such as sending her a CD copy of his song and giving her compliments when she was talking down on herself that she twisted and spit on as if it wasn't genuine care being expressed. Looking at some of these screenshots, there is genuine emotion coming through the text. And then you read her comments where she dismisses all the contents and just slaps the age range message over and over again. This is mainly like a theory, but from what I know now about this whole situation, it seems like she was trying to attention grab a little bit. And if I had to go out on a limb, maybe she didn't want me saying that stuff because it doesn't dirty Satu's name. I don't know why that would be her goal, but it seemed like if I said anything that wasn't that Satu this complete a-hole, then it was against her. I should also note that no aspect of the relationship was illegal. Looking into the laws, Ash claimed that the age of consent in her stage was 16, which isn't even relevant since they hadn't done anything sexual prior to her turning 18, so they waited two extra years simply out of respect for her mother's restrictions. As for Romeo and Juliet laws, again, these only apply to sexual relationships. The laws in her state are indeed a cut at four years, but it's irrelevant to their case since all they did was text non-explicitly. So those that specifically called for Sawtooth to be arrested are clearly wrong for such. Then there's the lesser known controversy regarding GameBits. As mentioned before, GameBits was their friend that helped pass messages through Sawtooth and Ash during their period of separation. I heavily value their input because the majority of those that commented on this case did not in fact have any up close perspective of what actually happened. GameBits remains the only known unbiased first person account of the relationship. Shortly after the initial call out, GameBits posted these screenshots confessing their part as the messenger between Sawtooth and Ash, but maintain they didn't suspect or witness any illegal or malicious activity. Though concerns initially were sparked, over time Sawtooth was trusted in having been genuine in his care for Ash. It definitely seemed genuine coming from him. Now obviously he probably didn't want to go privating all his videos and whatnot, but the fact that he did it without too much push goes to show that he really did feel bad about his actions. Like he felt like he needed to just go away because nobody liked him at that point. After posting the screenshots, Ash DM'd GameBits, demanding they take them down and claiming they were siding with Sawtooth. GameBits noted that there was no siding implied in their messages, simply detailing their side of the story. Eventually, the messages were deleted after Ash had repeatedly harassed them to do so. I've since persuaded GameBits to repost the screenshots, which I will link in the description. I encourage everyone watching to read it. It really does give a good perspective and ease some concerns regarding Sawtooth's morality. Lastly, before ending this video, I need to address the fandom reaction to this incident. There have been multiple different sides going on after the case, many of which were very radical and close-minded. Sawtooth is a flawed human being, just as much as Ash. Both made clear their mistakes and it resulted negatively for both of them. This entire thing should have remained private in between them. It was not a cause for alarm and not worth destroying Sawtooth's career. He himself has plenty of blame for the reaction as well, but I've seen quite a few arrogant and violent messages directed towards him for this mistake. Many have labeled him every name in the book, the majority of which categorically untrue. The purpose of this video is to analyze what exactly took place, whether or not it's as bad as it seems, and to give my thoughts on the events. I do not believe Sawtooth is a threat to anyone. What he did was a genuine mistake and does not point to pedophilia or intensive abuse or grooming. He was a genuinely caring friend by all accounts and that care was used against him. As for Ash, she was clearly hurt enough to go after Sawtooth and her emotions are valid to have, but the way it was presented eliminated any room for criticism on her part. She is responsible for her grades and studies, not Sawtooth, and she pushed the relationship hardest of the two. Being 15 to 18 doesn't absolve her of her actions, especially considering what they did was very tame for a teen relationship. Her attempts at silencing another valid voice with game bits are completely hypocritical after she had decided that Sawtooth begging for her not to come forward was manipulative. There are also some other testimonies from users that allegedly interacted with her on Google Plus with similar negative experiences, but I was unable to confirm these events, so take them with a grain of salt. And for my final message to Sawtooth Waves, I messaged you shortly after the incident. Unsure if you were able to read it or not, I noticed that you had closed off DMs at that point. I know you're very unhappy with the amount of defense that anyone has put in your favor, and who knows, you'll probably be in this comment section telling me to take this video down as you have in the past with other creators. I will not be doing that though. There is accountability and there is overcorrection. This one event should not have been enough to villainize your entire character, especially considering that you are growing just as much as everyone else. And yet you've allowed your name to be trashed beyond reasonable criticism. I'm sure you know that you are not a pedophile and I'm certain that everything that you had done was all in the matter of good faith. As a reminder for the show we are all connected to, far worse things have been subject to forgiveness. I need not to forgive you as this was not an issue that would have affected me apart from simply not being able to enjoy the videos I had enjoyed for years. I respect your decision to depart from the internet, even if indefinitely. 
but know that you are still human, capable of making mistakes and deserving a chance to make amends. I'd ask that your critics recognize that as well. This entire relationship drama should have remained private. It is not our business to be weighing in on these matters, and yet here we are. A complete mess of a once beloved channel and content creator, taken down by an over-exaggerated and mischaracterized series of events. The integrity of circumstance must be considered, and the humanity must be acknowledged. That will be the end of this video. I hope I've been able to express my analysis of the Satoon situation coherently and fairly, though I expect there is going to be conflicting responses in the comments. I encourage discussion and I will reply as much as I can, but trolling and overly emotional responses will not be tolerated. As for the state of my channel, I have been holding off videos, uh, specifically reaction videos, because of this particular issue. I've made it a goal for myself not to continue with any other video until I could finally finish this one because this is one I really wanted to get out. This whole video was not meant to take as long as it did, but so many things did eventually start piling up to the point where I just had to either push it back or add more things on it. But of course, above all, real life is going to be taking priority. I've kind of been having some issues with my job. Thanks to everyone for watching. Uh, I hope we can all move past this as a community in a positive and a constructive manner. And God bless, stay safe, have a nice day, and as always, Goodbye.